welcome everyone in this video we are going to talk about the union government state government and judiciary the main areas of discussion would be the structure and function of the legislature and the executive of the union government the qualifications and functions of member of parliament the power and functions of the president prime minister chief minister and the governor the functions of the lok sabha and the rajya sabha and the judiciary so let us start it the union government the union of india consists of 28 states and 9 union territories the union government is also called the central government the three organs of the central government are legislature which makes the laws besides it checks the executive then the executive which implements the laws and judiciary which gives judgment the union legislature is called the parliament the parliament of india consists of the president of india and the two houses the lok sabha and the rajya sabha the sessions of the parliament are held in the parliament at new delhi let us know about the two houses of the parliament the first one is lok sabha the lower house The Lok Sabha is the lower house of the parliament. The maximum number of seats are 552. The members are elected for 5 years. To become a member of the Lok Sabha, one should be a citizen of India. He or she should be at least 25 years of age. He should not be sentenced to imprisonment. And he or she should not be insolvent, which means not having enough money to pay one's debts. Let us know about the Lok Sabha Speaker. The members of the Lok Sabha elect one among themselves as the Speaker. Now, what does he do? The Lok Sabha Speaker decides about the matter to be discussed in the House. He also maintains discipline and the dignity in the House. Next is Rajya Sabha. The Rajya Sabha is the upper house of the Parliament. The maximum number of seats in Rajya Sabha is two fifty. Two hundred and thirty-eight members are elected by the members of the state assemblies. The remaining twelve members are nominated by the President of India. To become a member of Rajya Sabha, one must not be less than thirty years of age. The members are appointed for six years. The Vice President of India is the chairman of the Rajya Sabha. There is a person who is the leader of the opposition. So, what does he do? the leader of the opposition points out the lapses if any and gives advice to the government cabinet and administrators in the whole now let us discuss the powers and functions of the parliament the first one is legislative powers the main function of the parliament is to make laws whenever necessary the parliament can also amend or revoke the existing laws The main function is to make the council of ministers accountable to it. If the functions and behavior of the council of ministers is not conducive, they are removed through non-confidence motion in the parliament. Let us now move on to financial powers. The financial bill must be presented and discussed first in the Lok Sabha. The union government cannot collect taxes or spend money without the approval of the parliament. Next are the administrative powers the ministers are responsible to answer the questions asked by the members of the parliament next is the authority to amend the constitution the parliament has the power to amend the constitution so we have discussed about the new, the union legislature now we will discuss about the union executive the union executive is composed of the president the prime minister and the council of ministers we shall now discuss the powers and the functions of the president and the prime minister the president the president is the head of the indian republic he is called the first citizen of the country his official residence is rashtrapati bhavan the elected members of the both the houses of parliament and the members of the legislative assemblies of all the states elect the president of india to become the president of india one must be a citizen of india and must have completed 35 years of age the president is elected for 5 years 
Let us now move on to the powers of the president. The president appoints the leader of the majority party as the prime minister. On the advice of the prime minister, he appoints the other ministers. The assent of the president is necessary for any bill to become a law. The supreme command of the defense forces is vested with the president. He has the power to declare war or peace. The president has the power to appoint the judges of the supreme court and the high courts. He has the power to grant pardon or confirm the punishment. Shri Ramnath Kovind is the current president of India. Now let us move on to vice president of India. Shri Venkaiya Naidu is the current vice president of India. The members of both the houses of parliament elect the vice president. To become a vice president one must be over 35 years of age. The terms of office of vice president is for 5 years. He is chairman of the Rajya Sabha. He discharges the function of the president during the absence of the president. The next executive is the prime minister. The prime minister plays an important role in the parliamentary system of government. He has the prime responsibility of protecting the national security. He is the leader of the Lok Sabha. He allocates the portfolios of the ministers. He has the power to reshuffle the cabinet. He has the power to recommend the appointments of ministers to the president. He has the power to recommend removal of the ministers to the president. We have finished the union government. Now let us move on to the state government. The states have their own governments. Though their extent of power is limited, they have autonomy in their matters. The states are formed on the basis of languages. The state language of Karnataka is Kannada. Our constitution has laid down uniform system of administration in all the states. The state governments have similar government structure as the Union Government of India. Let us now move on to the state legislature. The three organs of the state government are the legislature, executive and judiciary. The state legislature is composed of the governor and the legislature. The state legislature have the two houses called the legislative assembly and the legislative council. Let us know about both the houses. Legislative Assembly The Legislative Assembly is the lower house. There are 224 seats in the Karnataka Legislative Assembly. The members of the Legislative Assembly, that is MLAs, elect one among themselves as Speaker of the House. The MLAs are elected for a period of five years. However, Assembly is not a permanent body. To become a member of Legislative Assembly, one must be a citizen of India, should not be less than 25 years of age, should not hold any office of profit under the government and should not be insolvent. Let us now know the powers and functions of the Legislative Assembly. In all financial matters, the decision of the assembly is final. The council of ministers are responsible to the assembly. When the majority of the members of the assembly find the government policies unsatisfactory, they may through non-confidence motion make the council of ministers resign. Another power or function is that the members participate in the election of the president of India. The second house is the Legislative Council, which is the upper house. The membership of the Legislative Council is not more than one third of the membership of the Legislative Assembly. The number of members in the Karnataka Legislative Council is 75. They are called MLCs. They are elected for a period of six years. They should not be less than 30 years of age to become a member of Legislative Council. A few members are nominated by the Governor and others are elected by the members of Legislative Assembly, local bodies, registered graduates and teachers. Let us now move on to the State 
executive the state executive is composed of the governor the chief minister and his council of ministers let us now understand about the governor and the chief minister the first is governor the governor is the head of the state executive but in actual working the chief minister is the chief executive the president nominates the governor whose term of office is for 5 years to become a governor one must be a citizen of india should have completed 35 years of age should not be a member of either parliament or state legislature governor appoints the chief minister and on his advice appoints the rest of the ministers the bill approved by the legislative houses needs the assent of governor to become a law when the president dissolves the state government and imposes the president's rule in state the governor takes charge of the administration of the state next is the chief minister he is the head of the state government the governor appoints the leader of the party or the group that gains majority in election for legislative assembly as the chief minister on the advice of the chief minister governor appoints the ministers the chief minister has the power to allocate the departments of the ministers he plays an important role in maintaining good relationship with the center and the states the next is the judiciary the independent system that interprets law and passes its judgment is called the judiciary law and judiciary plays an important role in administration of the states the courts interpret the laws framed by the legislature they give judgments related to the disputes between the individuals between individuals and government they perform the important task of protecting the life property dignity and rights of the citizens the courts are not controlled either by the legislature or the executive they function impartially and independently under the constitution we have a common judicial system for the entire country this promotes national unity the highest court of law in india is supreme court let us know little about the supreme court of india it consists of chief justice of india and other judges they are all appointed by the president of india the supreme court is in new delhi the next is the high courts the high court is the highest court of law in a state the high court of karnataka is in bengaluru it consists of the chief justice and other judges there are 24 high courts in our country let us now know about the qualifications of a high court judge he or she must be a citizen of india must have served under the indian judiciary for at least 10 years or must have served as an advocate for the high court for 10 years this flow chart clearly explains the three organs of the government of india that's all in this video thank you for watching and have a great day